Hi, welcome back to Three Talking Rabbits. This is Gail. This is going to be another homeschool post, and I'm going to take you on a little walkthrough of my son's nature journal that we started last year, and we are continuing this year. Um, last year was mostly just getting him drawing, um, and this year we're doing a little bit more in terms of directed activities. So this is my son's nature journal. It's just a dollar store notebook and here's my nature journal which was uh, not a dollar store notebook it's just a little bit more of ex an expensive journal that I had lying around and never used um, so he did not start doing this in any kind of order he kind of didn't have an a good idea of how books worked at the time but this is his moss post and there's a couple pages of moss in here and this has what is one piece of moss called, and it's a gametophyte, and what does it weigh? Three little plants weigh one gram, and he hadn't gotten the hang of putting the G down below, below the line. He knows to do that now. And we've labeled it moss, and it says on a maple tree. So this is the moss that was on the maple tree. And my entry for the moss is right here and I try to do similar things to what he's doing so that I can write his questions down in my journal rather than having to keep taking his journal from him and writing them down so here's a drawing of our maple tree one one bit on this page and one bit on this page and then we've taken the piece of moss from here and looked at it under the microscope at 10 times 20 times and 40 times this is a piece of sphagnum moss and then we did uh, another little study. This is an actual size study. He also did an actual size study, which is right here. And this is his drawing of the sphagnum moss. It says, moss does not like the sun. It had all bleached out. And then we did a thorny Thursday. Um, when we don't know what to do, we tend to do uh, themed things that start with the day of the week that it is. Um, and his Thorny Thursday is on a bunch of different pages. This is my Thorny Thursday. So we did the thistle, the rose bushes, and a locust twig. Here is his grapevine. And then he, he sat down on the ground and he started drawing the sticky weed. And it says, does sticky weed make you have a little itch yes and he got so itchy that he had to come in and take a bath so I finished writing that for him and here is my little drawing of the grapevine which I didn't get to do a whole lot of because we were asking a lot of questions that day which was fine some of them are upside down he also didn't care about the orientation of the book okay so here's his cherry tree and these were before the cherries were ripe and his question was, will the birds eat the cherries? And turns out they do. Not the green ones, though. So here's my cherry tree, and this is when I got the pens for the first time. Um, really like those pens, and I will leave a link down at the bottom as to what pens they are. I've very much enjoyed them. So we have some actual size things. There's a little white worm. Here's the outline of the leaf that I actually traced around. Here's a study of the flower and then the arrangement of the leaves and the fruit. This was chicken and feather. It was feathery Friday and we found a songbird feather which you can take pictures of, look at, draw, etc. but because of the Migratory Bird Act you can't collect them. Okay, so this is something that we have to leave outside. Um, and then we did the chicken feathers, and he actually went around this particular chicken feather and traced around it and drew it. So this is the actual size of the chicken feather. And then he drew the chicken, and she was pecking at something on the ground, but look where her foot is coming out. He has her foot coming out of her butt. I think that's so cute. So this is my drawing of that same day. And the chicken had stopped pecking at things, and she was laying down, and then the chickens were up here in the woods, pecking at stuff in the woods. 
It turns out that this was a barn swallow feather and there was a whole group of them, which I took time to trace around them. So these are all actual size. And um, it took a while to figure out what they were. So I had to find a good feather database for this to learn what they were. This was our first one that we ever did. And like I said at the time, he was just opening up the book and doing it. Um, and that was the dandelions. And we had a lot of fun with the dandelions. So here's his dandelion leaf. And here's his dandelion flower in a glass of water. Here's the stem of the flower. And here's the flower after we pulled it off the stem and put it on the table. And here's the seed. Um, it's Here's the scientific name that he copied over. And here is my page on the dandelions. And I learned a lot from this. The, this was my first Nature Journal entry, and it's it hooked me. Um, it's a wonderful practice, and I'm just going to continue to do it for as long as it makes me happy. This one was pretty funny. I asked him to go do a Nature Journal exercise, and he was not into it. Um, and before I could get my shoes on, he had hopped up into the boat, drawn a maple leaf, and come back in and said, I'm done! And I said, no, we're not done. <laughs> Please go get one of those leaves and bring it in, and we will study it and make, a, make an actual Nature Journal entry of it. So we learned a lot that day. The leaf that he picked off of the tree was not the same leaf that he had originally observed. The, the leaf he originally observed was a perfectly healthy leaf. But, so here we have maple leaf and mite, something, this is mite. And it says parasite. And these are two drawings of the spindle gall mites underneath the microscope. He did a great job on them. Here is my entry. And it took me almost all day to figure out what these things were, but this was so cool. This little orange bit right here is the spindle gall mite, and it was moving. When, I, when we cut this open and looked at it under the microscope, we could actually see that moving. And it's the same exact color as the orange on the outside of the gall. And I just thought that that was so neat that the mite and the gall match. This is his Felis Domesticus Tuxedo Kitten. So cute. He just wrote this yesterday when we went back through his journal. I don't remember who this kitten was. I know that we had a couple Tuxedo Kittens, um, but I don't remember if that was Juliet or if it was somebody else. And here we have his house flies. So much fun. This may look like a little scribble, but what he was actually doing is tracing the house flies flight pattern. And he did a really good job of it because this is a male housefly. And male houseflies and female houseflies have different flight patterns. The this loop and this are female flies. This kind of janky, jaggy movement, not quite at 90 degrees, that's a male housefly. And then we looked at different flies that I had cast in resin underneath the microscope. Um, I had him make a lot of different observations. Um, I wrote quite a few things in here because I, he gets tired of writing. He's, he's not, writing is really not his thing. Um, and he struggles with it hardcore. So if he writes just a little bit, I'm very happy. Um, here is my entry on the flies. And so there's a couple different flies there. Um, I observed different things than he did, but we, we learned about the fly flight path. And I, I really thought that that was wonderful. Here, um, we were outside and we was trying to do an assignment with him to get him to draw landscapes, but he was just very overwhelmed. So he did a couple cloud studies. So this cloud looked like a frog, and it really did. And then there was this cloud right here. And this was my nature journal entry of the same day. The raccoon came later that night, so I popped that in from a picture. But when he did the cloud studies, I did too. Um, and I did the landscape drawing, and then we made a list of animals that we had seen. And then a calendar of days. I did a lot more journal entries than he did, by the way, which is fine because it's, it's a wonderful little hobby. So we would refer back to this um, 
to know what day it was so that he's learning how to use a calendar. And here's my calendar of June. We were doing a map making exercise. Um, and so I had him map the front yard and he's made a map of the gardens and of the trees. And he really enjoyed this exercise. It, it took him a little bit to get through here. So here's the key for the fence and the tree. And this is for the, the garden. Um, and this points north. We talked about directions. Then we have a bluebird feather that we found. So we did the drawings of the bluebird feather. And it said, how did the blue jay die? Cat killed it. And then the colors are blue, white, and black. How big is it? 13 centimeters. And here's my journal entry for it, which is just this. This is the only part of the blue, the blue jay entry. And I have it noted that um, the blue is structural, not pigment. So it actually has to do with how the light is reflected in each feather versus the pigment of the feather, which I thought was very interesting. And their scientific name means blue chatterbird. Then we went on a walk down to the creek and we found, we were actually looking for cottonwood trees. And I said, I know that there's a cottonwood tree around here because the cottonwood seeds were going. And this is June 4th, 2021. And so we picked a cottonwood leaf, which has a heart shape <laughs> lefts. He, he wrote lefts, but it's leaves. Um, here's a picture of the seed, and it says silver bark. And then here is my journal entry for the cottonwood tree. So you can see the seed, the star-shaped pith in the center, what the twig looks like. This is an actual size of the leaf. I, I um, traced it around. And then here's a, a picture of the cottonwood tree. Not, not all of it. It would go up to there if it was. Um, and then there's poison ivy underneath the cottonwood tree. So this is what's called a zoom in, zoom out, where there's an image of the whole thing, and then there's images of parts of the thing. Um, and then I also did the willow tree that's next to it, and these two like to grow together, which I found very interesting. These are two pages that he did on two separate days. This is a leaf that grows on a bush slash tree outside of our driveway or on the side of our driveway and he picked it and he said it's bigger than the kitten and the kitten's name is Muffin and I think that he has the kitten's name is Niffum here <laughs> but her name was Muffin. Uh, she lives very happy with one of my friends now and then it's a pig nut hickory and of course he's written it upside down and I did not do one for the pig nut hickory but we went for a walk and um, we, when we came back from the walk, we listed all of the things that we had seen that day. And so here we have a dragonfly and a catfish and a carp and a butterfly and Piglet, who is our neighbor's dog. Here is my nature journal entry. And it notes that Piglet thought we were lost because our neighbors have a bed and breakfast where they offer hiking trails and that type of thing. So Piglet goes with the guests and she makes sure that they get home. And that's her job. And because we were the neighbors, but she didn't know it, she insisted that we had to go back up to the bed and breakfast so that we would be safe. So we took Piglet home. Um, then we went on a little adventure to John Roberts Treehouse, which is a hunting stand that there are no deer by. <laughs> so it just basically sits there. And it's a great little observation platform. There's a, a beautiful meadow um, and there's trees all around and there's tons of birds and there's all these flowers. So he drew some of the flowers. He drew the back field. And this is my nature journal entry about it. And I noted some of the birds that I saw real quick and the view out of the tree house. This was the woodcock that Sassy caught for her kittens and they didn't eat it. And I would not have been upset about it if they had actually eaten it, but none of them would touch it. Um, I didn't even know that woodcocks existed before that day. My son thought it was hilarious that he got to draw a decapitated bird. Here's a feather study that he did. Uh, this is more feather studies. This is the pattern of the feathers. 
and then he attempted to draw the foot. Now I think he actually did a pretty decent job of it. Um, here is my study of the woodcock and I did a foot study and a feather study as well. And I've been coming back into them and doing this sort of thing, uh, just as like doodling. I don't do this initially. This, this is just fun stuff. Then <laughs> we did smell. Um, this is in, we're now into July with this, and I wanted him to do some exploring of the five senses. And again, this, this is not necessarily in order, so there's some things that are going to be before this that are after this, but um, we did like a pie chart. This was an introduction to a pie chart and the, the different senses, and I had him write things on one and then I wrote the rest on the others and then he was to draw the objects. Um, here is mine. So you can see the pie charts. And so how much it takes up is how strong the flavor was, or the scent, not flavor, scent. And then this one, he just did a little bit on the um, Eldest Bar Moths. I did a lot on the Eldest Bar Moths. But I was very proud of him with these particular drawings. He, he did a great job. So this is a female, this is the back of the female, and this is the underside of the female. And it says white and gray and fuzzy. Although it looks like fussy, it's supposed to be fuzzy. I'll take, I'll take fussy as the word. And here is my drawing. And I'm especially proud of him on this one. This is pretty much exactly what that looked like. Then we have one on snails. And that was super fun. So we actually went out and kidnapped some garden snails. It was a rainy day, and I was like, let's nature journal. And he's like, but it's raining. And I said, let's go get something and bring it in. So we brought in the snails, um, and I did some drawings on it. And then he wanted to learn how to do cursive. So this says snails are, and then he printed invertebrates. Um, and then this is black, brown, and white. And then slowly, slowly, and shell, or maybe this is S-L-I, oh, slimy, shell, and slow is what he's written there. And here is my nature journal entry on the snails, and I've got a little medieval guy fighting a snail because I needed to fill up some space, and it was cute. So here we have more on the Eldest Bar Moths. Um, we had kept them in a tank to do the whole like life cycle observation thing and I didn't want to keep a species that was native to the area because I knew that we weren't going to be releasing them. So because these are invasive, I figured it was a very ethical project to do with these particular moths. We spoiled the caterpillars rotten and the moths don't eat. Um, they were able to breed, so we were able to observe the egg cases. And here's the female and the male. They were, they were dead. There were ten female, and he had eight, oh, eight egg cases. So moths, how many? And then for his environmental stewardship, we scraped the Eldispar eggs off of the trees and put them into soapy water. So hopefully we will have fewer Eldispar moths eating our trees this year. So here's my drawing of the same thing. And so now we have the empty egg, or empty chrysalis. We've got males and females, the egg cases, and one of the eggs which is blown up much bigger than what they are. They're really only like teeny tiny. Um, and a little bit of more on the project. By the way, these egg cases are just as itchy as the caterpillars are, just so you know. This is one of the other pages of his Thorny Thursday post. Um, so here is his thistle. It wasn't the rose. We mislabeled that, or he mislabeled it. It was the thistle. And it says, thistle is something dry and crinkly. So again, here's my thistle rose bush and black locust piece. 
And here is his black locust piece, so he wrote locust there. <coughs> and it's set in upside down. Here's his rose, which is supposed to be read that way. And then this one was actually our first uh, plot study for the new school year. So we had quite a bit of fun with this. It was a hot day. So he was like, when can we go back inside? It's so hot. Um, this is a one meter by one meter by one meter. So four meter square study of what's on the ground and what's above it. So you pretend that there's this box that goes up, straight up and straight down. And you only draw what's inside that box. And so he has a list of living and non-living things, um, tracks and scat, signs of humans, and then describe your plot, which he did. And then here is mine. And it this was surprisingly tricky. I did not expect that to be as difficult as it was, but it really was hard because you have to pretend that nothing else exists beyond it. So just figuring out what is exactly inside that circle. And he chose a, a square of land that was almost bare, thinking that he would get away with something, I think. And it turned out to be a really smart choice because we were able to individually list and label each thing versus picking something that was like packed with stuff. I think this was actually a smart choice. Even though he was making the lazy choice, I think it was actually a very smart choice for this project. And then yesterday we did Taste, which I thought was a wonderful project. And this is going back to like the smell thing. So we're going to do one of each of the five senses. And so um, for taste, we have salty, sweet, bitter, sour, and umami. Spicy is not a taste. It is a touch sensation like hot or cold. And so we did mushrooms, turkey meat, paprika, lemon, and chocolate. And each bar represents a particular amount of that flavor that is in that particular food. So he learned about bar graphs too. And here is mine. Not terribly exciting, but fun. These are all sort of going to be pickup pages from when he wasn't paying attention to the order of things. This was a on a hike down into our woods. And then he had a butterfly land on the page, so he sketched that. And then he saw a bird, so he sketched that. And this is where we actually did identify the pig nut hickory. This one is down in the lane, but we identified it by the bug, by the by the buds, and by the how the leaves bloom out. Here is his sketch of the ducklings and the chicks. When we got them, I, this was 616, that was the day after we got them. And here is our, or my, sketch of the ducklings and chicks. Here he's done a sketch of a rose or a peony. And here's the peony leaf and the rose leaf. And he asked me how to tell the difference between the rose and the peony, because they, the flowers look almost exactly alike. And so we had a big discussion about the leaf shape. And so I had him pick one leaf off of the rose and one leaf off of the peony and trace around them and make his observations to determine which one is which. Um, and here is my sketch of the rose. And I've also got some bird song in here which says, Woochie, 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 woochie. Um, and then it got rained down. Here is his sketch of the tree that's down by the creek. And this says, this is the tree by the stream in our woods. What kind of tree is it? Is it a silver birch? By the way, it's not. The bark was brownish gray and light gray. It had both smooth, both rough and smooth bark at different parts of it. So that was his drawing of that. So here's the creek and stream and here's the drawing of the tree. And then, I'm sorry, this is very light. I never finished it. This is the drawing of the tree with the stream. So he did a very good job with it. And I believe that that is all that's in here. At this point, I will take you on a little hike through my nature journal, just as a flip through without 
too many explanations. So this was the first page with the dandelions. Drawing of a cat under the table. Thorny Thursday. The hike down into the woods with the various trees. Our moss study from Mossy Monday. The grapes. The cherries. A little study of the stump and the things that grow on it and the raspberry bushes. The barn swallows and the chickens for Feathery Friday. There's a lilac study. I really wanted to do the lilacs. A pile of kittens. Here's the spindle gall mites. Bunnies! I had to do the bunnies. It was raining like crazy that day. The house fly. The landscape study with a little cat food eater. Cornish cross chicken skulls. Ancient corals that are in our collection. This is not flock. Um, this is Dame's Rocket and I learned in this one that they are two different plants. Not the same at all. Ticks suck. I had gotten bitten by a tick. I hate them. But on antibiotics, feel much better. Here's the June calendar. This is where we captured some L. Dispar moths. I named this one unofficially Julie and it turned out that she was female. A study of the, the trees down by the creek. Peony, I was actually more interested in the fly's flight path there. And this is Mallow, I had never known what that was. The trip to the creek. And this one was cool, this is a horsehair worm. And I thought it was part of the bindweed, but it's not. Some court studies. The trip to the treehouse. The woodcock. Ducklings and Cornish crosses. The roses with a little brilliant green bug. And on the blank pages I've started taking notes on nature journaling. This was a memory study of a butterfly. Here was a sketch when I got home of our finds at Penn Dixie Fossil Park in uh, Hamburg, New York. More of the L. Dispar moths in their progression. The last day that the kittens were here before they went to their forever home. Here's our July calendar. Um, right here my uh, thermometer died so I have no idea what the temperature was for July or August. We need to get a new thermometer. More on the L. Dispar moths. More on the ducklings. Strawberries. Oh, this was awful. We had our chicks attacked by raccoons. And then my bunny got fly strike. We have a new uh, care plan for him to keep this from happening again. This was my worm page. The, this was a red wiggler. Um, and I learned a lot about worms. More than I ever thought I would learn. More of the Eldispars. Dropped feather that actually belongs to this guy, which surprised me. No touchy moth or caterpillar turns into that moth, which I never finished drawing. And then more moths and more moths. I don't know what kind of moth this is. And then I seem to be doing a lot of documenting my cat's meals. So this was a head and a um, tail and a wing tip left from a cedar wax wing that my cat decided to munchy crunch. The snails, more of the moths, and then August, which I did almost no nature journaling in. We did go fishing. That was fun.
flock of either blackbirds or something. 3 a.m. visitors. Bugs and bats and a walking stick. The plot study. September's calendar. And the flavor study, which is the last thing in here. So I hope you enjoyed the trip through our nature journal. And if you did, please like and subscribe for more randomish videos on fun things from homeschooling to crafting to really out of the way crafts and bunnies and whatever else I happen to get into. All right, you all have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye.